Hi, I'm Christopher Walker with Closely Observed English, and I'm going to talk to you today about listening skills. So here's the situation. One of my students recently took a C1 advanced test. He did pretty well. We were happy with the results, but we weren't very happy with the listening results. When I met the student, he was confused. But Chris, he said, I watch Netflix all the time. I understand everything. I listen to the radio. I can understand everything that the people are talking about. So why didn't I get a good mark on my listening test? Well, I said, the problem is that when you watch Netflix or when you listen to the radio, you're listening in a very passive way. You might be listening for entertainment or to get a general idea of what's going on in the world, but you're not listening so that you can take away specific information. You need to listen more actively, and that means evaluating what you hear, and it means criticizing what you hear. Hmm, he said, I'm not sure if I really understand what you mean. Could you explain it differently? Okay, he didn't really say this, but you get the idea. And I said, okay, well, imagine this. Imagine you go to see a movie and you come out of the cinema. What are your first thoughts? Hmm, well, I suppose, he said. I would say, I liked that movie, it was good. Maybe I would say, I like the acting, I like the story, I like the sound effects or the music. I said, okay, that's great. So you formed an opinion, very subjective, but you could say if you like or dislike it. But when you came out of the cinema, did you place that film in the context of the genre? Did you think how it compared to other films? Did you think about the underlying philosophy of the film and what it teaches us about the world? Hmm, said the student, no, not really. Usually when I see a film, I like the film, so I go onto YouTube and I look for a review of the film. The film critic can tell me all of these things. I said, exactly. So that's the difference. Somebody who enjoys watching a film is watching passively, just as if you're learning through listening on Netflix, you're doing it all passively. A critic is a good person to turn to for the active side of things. So how can you become more active in your listening? And in this video, I'm going to tell you three different methods that you can try to help improve your listening skills and work towards becoming a more active listener. Okay, so the first idea is to do a kind of prediction task when you're listening or watching something. So let's say that you're watching an interview on the news. Maybe a famous politician is being interviewed. Maybe the interviewer is talking to Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of uh, what is at the moment the United Kingdom. Maybe the interviewer says, Mr. Johnson, let's talk about the high-speed train network that you want to set up, the line going from London to Birmingham. We've just heard that it's going to be really, really expensive. What do you have to say about that? Now, if you're watching this on YouTube or something, you should pause that video. Pause it and think to yourself, hmm, what is Boris Johnson going to say about that? How will he answer the question? This is a prediction. You're using what you know about politicians or even about Boris Johnson, if unfortunately you know much about him. You're using that knowledge to help you predict what will come next. Then when you press play, you can evaluate your prediction against what you hear. Maybe you predicted that Boris Johnson would say, oh, no, no, it's a great idea to build this train line. It will reinvigorate businesses in Birmingham. Maybe that was your prediction. Maybe instead he will say, oh, we have to show how strong Britain is in the world. We're a powerful nation, blah, blah, blah. 
So you could compare your prediction against what he said and then criticize it. How close to the question was his answer? Did he answer the question? And if he did, how? How can you tell? This kind of prediction uh, listening is a very active form of listening and it will help you with, for example, the multiple choice listening where you're listening to maybe an interview in the B2 first or C1 advanced exam. C2 proficiency has something similar as well. And when you have the question, you can try to predict what the people are going to say and then measure what they actually say against your prediction. This will help you build your listening skills actively. The second idea is about note taking. So my student was telling me about his listening skills and he said, but Chris, sometimes I watch a nature documentary and I'm sure I learn a lot about the animals in the documentary. So I said, hmm, okay, so tell me about an animal. And he said, um, well, I don't know really, what can I say? He didn't really know what he was going to say because he hadn't been actively listening to the documentary. So how can you actively listen in this sense? Well, let's say that you're about to watch um, a YouTube video about an animal. It doesn't matter which one, let's say you want to find out more about coyotes. So before you watch, you could make a list of questions, things that you want to know about coyotes. Uh, where do they live? Uh, what time do they hunt? Uh, what animals do they like to eat? How big are they? Do they go around in groups or on their own? So you can have this list of questions. Then when you press play to watch the video, you have to answer those questions yourself, taking information from uh, the video, from the listening. This is much like um, part two of the C1 advanced listening, the sentence completion. There's something similar at first and at proficiency. There's a little difference, of course. In the Cambridge exams, if you have to listen for one piece of information, you might hear three things, only one of which fits the sentence. So whilst this note taking uh, is a great idea for building your active listening skills, it's not the perfect practice for a Cambridge exam. The best practice there is just to do practice tests. But in terms of building your active listening skills, this sort of note taking where you've made the questions yourself and you're looking for that specific information is really useful because maybe when you finish, you find that you haven't got all the information you need. Maybe you miss something, so you have to watch the video again. Maybe they didn't mention it. Or maybe they use some language that you just didn't know. So for example, you're looking at a video about uh, an animal and you want to know when they hunt. You can see from the video that they hunt at night. But nobody says night or night time. Instead, the presenter talks about the animal being nocturnal. And you go, hmm, I wonder what that is. So you check it in the dictionary, of course, and lo and behold, it was the word you were looking for. You'll remember that word because you had to find it out for yourself. And it's your active listening skills that helped you. And number three, my last listening tip here is a little bit more complicated. So it might be one that you should try with your teacher's help, but you can give it a go. Imagine you're watching a kind of discussion program, maybe one of those um, morning TV shows where you have a presenter sitting here and then you have two people sitting here and the presenter says something. Blah, blah, blah. This person says something. This one looks at them and goes, mm, and they disagree. They get angry and then they start talking against each other rah, 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 like that. Well, you can use your eyes to see that the two people disagree. Great, but remember we're looking at learning how to be an active listener. So rewind a little bit. You know that they disagree, but how do they show it? 
how do they show that disagreement? In this third point, I want you to listen for the specific language that gives us that information. Is it something simple? Maybe the first person says something, the second person says, yeah, but, and then they introduce their counterpoint. So that yes, but is a typical way of showing some information. I watched a very interesting and funny uh, video from America recently. I've got the link for you in the description below so you can see this same video. And it had to do with the Trump impeachment. Uh, a guy called Klepper, I think Jordan Klepper, was visiting a Trump rally in Iowa. And he asked if uh, witness testimony should be allowed, if John Bolton, for example, should be allowed to talk at the impeachment. And the Trump supporter said no, because he would lie. So Klepper, the interviewer, who has very good active listening skills, you watch the video, he is very good at listening carefully to what people say so that he can evaluate and criticize. Anyway, Klepper then says, oh, do you think there should be a system where somebody has to say, I, I promise not to lie, and if they do lie in the court, they go to prison, for example. And the other person says, yeah, there should be. Now, the funny thing here is, Klepper was describing what is already the case. If you are a witness called in a trial, you swear, usually on the Bible in the United States of America, that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And if you, it turns out that you didn't do that, you, found in, you are found in contempt of court, and you can end up in prison. So that's the situation as it is. But the guy didn't seem to understand that. And you can see it. Watch that video. You can see it because he says, yeah, there should be. The modal use of the word should with the verb be suggests that he understands that there isn't something like this and that it would be a good idea to have it. So by looking carefully at the words and the language that is used to express this idea, we can see a lot. We can learn a lot about what that person understands. And you're tested on these sort of things in the exams, in Cambridge exams. You're tested on the underlying beliefs and assumptions that people make when they speak, especially when you get to the highest levels like the C2. At C2 proficiency, when you listen, you've got to kind of read between the lines. It's not what people say, it's what is revealed by what they say. Which is why this third tip of looking for the language that shows a person's perspective and analyzing that language, while it is going to be difficult to do, it will be very worthwhile. So those are three tips. And a final general idea is this. If you are listening passively, you can tell. Because when you watch a 30 minute long show on Netflix, for example, a passive listener or passive watcher, let's say, will take 30 minutes to watch that show. But if you are active, it will stretch, it will be much longer. So start with short videos. Start with videos that last about five minutes. As a good rule, that five minute video, if you listen actively and you do the prediction or the notes or looking for the language that shows meaning, that five minutes will soon balloon up and take 30 or 40. And you might say, that's a lot of time. And then I'll say, yeah, it is a lot of time. But if you do it, you'll see a big improvement in your listening scores. And who knows, you might even start to see an improvement in your reading scores. Because when you're reading, you need to read actively and not passively in the exam. So there you go. Those are my three tips to help build your listening skills. I'm sure there are other useful things that you can do. 
If you've got an idea of how to build your listening skills, or if you've tried something different that works, please share your idea in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, please think about liking it and subscribing to the channel. It would really help me out. The more people who subscribe to the channel or like the videos, the more likely these videos are to appear in other people's recommended viewing streams and things like that. I like to think that these videos are worthwhile. It takes me at least as long as uh, the videos last to make the videos, you know, with uploading and editing. I'm just saying thank you if you do subscribe. It's really kind of you. And that's it for now. So until next time, take care.